Praise God. Right now, I'd like to do a refutation of a baby Christian, babes in Christ, and in more specific to those that are permitting this in the church and using it as like a positive doctrine, okay? There is no such thing as a carnal Christian, as in they're saved, okay? The carnal Christian if you will, and you're trying to get this from what Paul taught, which is a fair way to say it if you're teaching it correct, is someone who is now carnal, now unsaved, and was previously a real Christian. Okay, that gives you the just weight of what is being taught. You're yet carnal. You're babes in Christ. It's basically that. Okay, carnal Christian, babes in Christ. It's a negative saying. It's Paul rebuking them. And telling them their deeds of sin, their denominating, and these things is causing them to be unsaved. Okay. And that's just the simple reading of 1 Corinthians 3. And then just looking at something like Romans 8. Okay. Now, a good context of a babe is 1 Peter 2. And the good part of it, good is that they have laid aside all these sins. And now they have the sincerity and the innocence and the desire for milk. And that could be relatable back to a newborn, who's obviously innocent, has desire for milk, and things like this, okay? And that's holy, okay? So there's no saved sinners. It's just an offshoot of salvation and sin. That's all this is of these baby Christians under a good light, Okay? Because they're still in sin, but they're new to the faith. You know, they're in sin. It's just the way it is. It's a heresy. Okay, so now in Hebrews 5, let's read a few things here. Because this ties it together very well. So here, the writer is speaking of those that are dull of hearing. Well, Jesus teaches, they that are of God hear God's words. These people are dull of hearing. Okay, were they never saved? No, that's not what the writer is teaching. For when the time, for when for the time, excuse me, you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. So they should have been teachers. And you're only going to get to that point to start with if you got a 1 Peter 2, right? But now they've gone backwards, and now they need milk again. Okay, which shows they've lost their salvation as I keep going. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. So now, I think what the writer is teaching is someone who's going to go about calling himself a teacher using milk is a fraud because they're teaching milk to the church when the church is supposed to get on strong meat at some point. Okay. They already have milk if they're real legit, but you're telling people that are in sin, they're real legit when the Bible is saying otherwise. Okay. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. If you don't have already exercised senses to discern good and evil, how can you even say you're saved? See, now if you get saved, you're in that good state of 1 Peter 2. There's got to be that humility. And you're going to hear the word of God rightfully divided. Okay, you're going to try these things. It's going to be on the spirit of God. There is nothing else to say. Okay. That means if you go to a home group or you go to, you know, even, you know, a building that isn't like a full-blown call, there's nothing right off the bat that's so clearly wrong with it, like woman pastor or something or sodomite pastor or, you know, something like this, and you give them a try and you find that they don't have it, then you leave. That's it. Okay. Grown men on the strong meat don't even get involved. And the 501c3. I'm here to say it. They just don't get involved in it. Okay. And if there's some sort of ignorance about this, then just repent. You've been told. If you need clarification, get a hold of me. I can explain it to you. There's no point 
in getting involved with someone who's 501c3. The leaders of these groups don't get it. Okay. You can test them. Okay. If the only problem they have was 501c3, if that were to be the case, okay, then rebuke them for that. The church of God is not subject to ordinances of man. Okay, so now going into chapter 6. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. So here, this is a doctrinal perfection moving toward it. But are you actually moving toward this perfection, going on to it? Because... One of the principles and foundation is repentance of dead works. So if you're telling someone that they're saved when they still have dead works, you're teaching heresy. Okay? You're actually not even teaching milk. What you're doing is teaching rotten, like, spoiled, poisonous milk. Okay? It's not the milk of the word that you got to tell people they're saved. Oh, but you need to repent. You're double-minded. You're teaching doctrines of men, which is like the most first important principle of doctrines of men is salvation and sin. Where are you going to find anyone that doesn't believe that? Next to no one. I mean, in the cults, it's there. In the social clubs, it's there. You know? And non-Christians believe that too. You know? Some of them. I'm not saying they all do, but... So we see how utterly confusing it is, all right? You're not a teacher of the Bible if this is all you can teach, according to what it says in Hebrews 5 and 6. And I think taking the chapter break here out really helps see that, okay? I mean, here we see salvation, the author thereof in Jesus Christ, verse 9 of Hebrews 5. It's about those that are obeyed. Obeying, excuse me. If you're not obeying, then there's no salvation. So how can someone be a babe in Christ? They're new to the faith and they're still sinning. And you're speaking well of them as in they're saved. It's impossible. Now, if you look at some of these other doctrines here, we see the antinomians saved in sin have already refuted them. Just looking at this fairly, people cannot be saved, can't even be in the principles if they don't have faith toward God. So if they think Jesus Christ is created being, they're not saved. They're not even teaching milk, teaching heresy. They're teaching the poisonous milk. Baptisms, infant baptism, baptismal regeneration, laying on of hands, fellowshipping with sinners, resurrection of the dead, those that deny the resurrection, you know, certain cults. Those that say you don't have to believe in the resurrection, although it's true, you can even maybe speak against it. What did Paul say? Thou fool. Okay. And of eternal judgment, any sort of annihilationist. And I think it's also fair to include soul sleep heresies. I don't know if there's many people that hold to a soul sleep than an eternal torment after the resurrection. I haven't heard that combination, but you get my point. I mean... These are the last hours, and it's just a splinter. That's all it is. You have salvation and sin, one of the greatest heresies, and it's just a splinter off of that to say, well, they're babe in Christ. You know, they're new to the faith, but they're still in sin. You give them like a half holiness, a pseudo holiness. Well, they got to come out of it later. But that's how it works for all of us, you know. We all just come to the faith and sin. It's because people are too proud to give up their quote-unquote testimony. It's all about you. You have to see that. It's all about you, sinner. You're saved. You're this. You're that. You were doing all these great things. You know why? Jesus Christ is never knowing you. Okay? Why? Because you're a worker of iniquity. Your very testimony is that you're a worker of iniquity. When you came into the faith, you're still a sinner. I mean, can't you read what it says? And for those that have known, that have heard this, and they hear this, and they don't do it, well, you see that, okay? It's a great fall. So Matthew 7 does give both. 
the never saved to begin with, and those that lose it. And Hebrews is talking about those that are dull of hearing now. They used to have these things. And once you have these things, what should you be searching? You should be covet, coveting earnestly the best gifts. And one of the best gifts you can ask for is to teach the Bible. Okay? It's part of the Great Commission. It's part of the church. Okay? So it is suitable in many areas, in all areas. Okay? And the Holy Ghost teaches so the Holy Ghost is in you. Allow the Holy Ghost to use you to teach. But you have to have the humility. You have to be skillful. You have to have good discernment. You have to have these things. You have to get on strong meat. Well, people don't want strong meat after a while. They just go back. They go back to the world. And then they start spewing out this false milk, okay? The repentance of dead works. Man, people can't even get that. That's so clear. Praise God.